Um, hi, my name is Stella Lee. I um, am a principal of Bureau V, an architecture firm based in Brooklyn, New York. Um, and I, both of my parents come from Korea. Uh, my father is from an area called Ponghua, and my mom is from Seoul. Um, and they both emigrated to the United States in the 70s. Um, and I think they both were children when the Korean War was happening. So um, although my father's a bit older, so he remembers a bit of it. Um, and uh, after that, um, well, there are a lot of stories in there already. But after that, um, my parents both went on to complete their studies. And my father moved in the early 70s to the States to start his business there. Um, and when I was growing up, um, we started out in New York in Queens, which is where I was born. Um, and we moved to New Jersey when I was three. Um, and we often went to Korea, I guess at least once every year for three months. I spent all my summer vacations there. Um, and would often just go to visit relatives, really. We stayed at my grandmother's house. and. Um, and really there wasn't much that I remember from that time except spending a lot of time with my grandparents. We weren't really being tourists because we were just there for family. So I didn't really travel as much as I think I, one would imagine I would have. My most recent trip to Korea, which was this past May, was probably my first time there as a tourist. I took my husband, who had never been there before, um, with me. And we basically, for the first time in my life, traveled through Korea. So we went from Seoul to uh, Saraksan, which I had, I'd been to before, but um, and also further south to Jeonju, Suncheon, and Busan. And we also made it to Jeju-do. So um, we saw a lot of the country and sort of realized that, I mean, we already knew that it was mostly covered by mountains, but this is really quite the case. It's 70% mountains. So um, the cities are actually really compact when you, um, when you find, you know, go through them. And uh, another thing we realized was that because we're both architects, um, we thought we were sort of interested in finding things that made Korea special architecturally. And this was kind of hard to find. I mean, the most um, at least in terms of the way you would identify like European cities or other even Asian cities, um, there's certain land landmarks. Um, this doesn't exist as much in, Co in South Korea, it seems, um, because most of the buildings were built really rapidly um, and hastily in the 70s and 80s, I think. So you have a lot of these concrete housing blocks, um, which look like they were hastily put together. They're not very interesting. And we were a little disappointed to see that. And I'd, I'd honestly never noticed, because I just lived in those housing blocks for most of the summers of my life and never really thought to judge it. But um, that was something we noticed. And in the midst of those buildings, there are a lot of newer high rises, which I think do seem to um, carry greater ambitions for the cityscape. Um, especially in Busan, I, I think. Um, there are certain areas of Busan that I found interesting. Um, but at the moment, it's already so dense and populated that I, I think even building in, in cities like Seoul is really difficult right now. Um, and then the other thing we also discovered was that um, we were going through a lot of the old temples and ruins that and palaces that existed before. Um, and found that most of them were actually reconstructions. So there's very little original ancient architecture still existing in Korea, um, which I think I always knew, but I, I was kind of surprised to find that it was almost always the case that everything was a reconstruction. Um, and this is quite different from you know, other cities in Asia, for example, where you do have older buildings that, are, that have actually been there for ages. Um, since I think Korea has a special history of um, being occupied by lots of different countries, um, that makes it, you know, that has always made its structures more vulnerable to um, this destruction um, and fire. So, what we, I just, it just sort of felt interesting because it felt like we were looking at representations of what used to be and not the actual thing. Um, which is what a lot of these sites felt like. 
it's, it's still interesting, but they're also always a little too vividly painted, a little too fresh looking, um, and also still under construction while we were visiting them. Um, and I guess otherwise, I, we both um, found, in any case, the people, I mean, the people are were basically my relatives, but um, they're all, always super generous and sweet. Um, my husband's a foreigner, he's German, so they couldn't really speak to each other very well, but um, they were super, um, super open. And one of my uncles could speak a little bit of German, so he, he was able to communicate with him. And our trip in Hull was really interesting. I, I can't say that we were, I think it was interesting because you know, you, you sort of start to realize how complex the history of Korea is as you um, travel through it, and that it's not just, a, you know, there is a history of conflict which sort of reads across the entire landscape. Um, and, um, and also a lot of optimism, I think, um, in the way there are projects, um, there are new projects being built, there are new um, cultural events being um, created and held. Um, I think Busan as a city also developed quite a lot in the last 10, 15 years, um, from what I understand. And um, uh, I guess I look forward to visiting it again soon. <laughs>